guys, Long Howl Larry, and we're up here in the UP uh, doing a renovation on this house. Um, last video, you guys probably saw me doing the drywall and the mudding and everything. I'm waiting for that to dry. It's almost dry. It's just a little bit down in the lower corners. It's still a little tacky. I got a heater going in there. Waiting for that to dry so that we can sand it and put another coat on. But I am starting with the electrical in the in the dining room. And I have it pretty much set up, but we're going to be doing a three-way switch to a puck LED light that's going to be mounted right here. And I thought maybe you guys might find this interesting. Um, I have this all set up. Um, I have a, there's a junction box. There's going to be four junction boxes up in the attic of this house. I've rewired the entire house. I'm taking all the old old wiring out. None of it had ground wires run. Um, a lot of new technology, you gotta have a ground wire hooked up or it won't work. And um, a lot of wiring was just super, super old. And so we're just replacing all the wiring in this house, making this place safe. So I have, I'm gonna have four junction boxes. There's a junction box that will feed the kitchen and the bathroom. There's a junction box that feeds this bedroom the ferry room and the laundry room back there and then there's going to be a junction box just for this room the dining room and then there's going to be a junction box for the living room um i'm doing this i'm i'm utilizing just this room together for one reason basically because the furnace i want to make sure that this has that nothing could trip the furnace it's on a good circuit and I have, you use 14 gauge most of the time in a house for outlets and stuff for common stuff that you use every day. Um, a 14 gauge wire is this right here. And it's a pretty common size. That's what you use most of the time for outlets. But from the breaker box up to all the junction boxes in the attic is 12 gauge. And basically the difference between the 12 and the 14 is just the size of the wire. The 14 gauge wire is just bigger. That's all it is. And it can handle more current going through it. So you can kind of think of it as a faucet. A bigger hose, will more water can go through. That's why you use bigger wire. And if you use smaller wire and you put a lot of current through it, it actually gets hot and it could start a fire. So you want to use bigger wire to do the current. So I have all 12 gauge wire running from the breaker boxes to all the different junction boxes. And then I have 12 gauge wire actually running to certain locations, like the, the where the microwave is. From the junction box to the microwave, there's a 12 gauge wire for that outlet so that it supplies because that's going to, that's higher draw. Um, each heater. <clears throat> that is going to be put in a bathroom, the laundry mat, and the ferry room. Those are all run with 12 gauge wire. Uh, so I ran 12 gauge to that outlet by that window because I thought, I don't know if it's going to happen or not, but you know, if we ever decide to put a little window air conditioner in there for sleeping or something, then you know, you want to have a heavy gauge wire. I also ran 12 gauge wire down to the furnace because um, I want this to be on draws i don't want any kind of issues with it and then i have it all wired out for different outlets there's going to be a lot of outlets in this house and i mean they're only like 50 cents for an outlet box buck something for a, an outlet and it is run the wire it's really not that difficult and i mean how many times have you been in sitting someplace oh i need to plug a vacuum in i need to plug a fan in or i want to charge a phone and then there's not an outlet by you or whatever sorry you get an extension cord or something this way there's going to be outlets everywhere um by the desk here <clears throat> there's actually going to be two outlets under the desk for plugging in all the different monitors and all the different printers and stuff and then there's also going to be an outlet on top of the desk that will be up in the corner um, that you can have something plugged into it, an iPad or whatever you want to plug into. Um, but everything is wired up. There's multiple outlets along the wall. There's a light switch there that will control that. That's where the ceiling fan is going to be. This is where a ceiling fan used to be. Um, lower ceilings are seven foot ceilings. I'm a tall guy. 
I don't like the duck, so I moved the ceiling fan over. It's going to be right on top of the table. You know, not too many times. You're going to be walking on top of the table. Um, this is going to be a puck light here for when you come in the front door. You turn the light switch on. It will turn this light on. But also, it will serve as dual purpose for when you're sitting at the desk. It, these LED lights really brighten up a lot. So it's kind of closer to the desk, so it lights that up. I asked Tracy if she wanted a light right above the desk. And she didn't. She thought one of these lights, they were pretty bright. And thought that would be enough. But like we talked about, maybe we'll put a lamp over here or something if you need, you know, really look at some paperwork or something. Um, so this room's pretty much done. <clears throat> but now we're going to wire up a three-way outlet here. I'm going to be putting an LED puck light here. And I want to have a three-way light switch hooked here. And hook there so they can be turned on or off from both locations to do that it's a little bit different configuration than original than a regular switch uh, let me get a regular switch this is just a regular light switch and the way that you would usually run a regular light switch is you have a power which is here this is why you're coming out you see p written on it. it's labeled it that's the power um, this comes to the junction box for this room it's run up there and junction into it and usually what you do is the power coming in you will tie to one of these screws here you'll put the ground wire over here and in the white wire let's say that this is the wire that goes to the light that's going to be in the ceiling the white wire out of there you put a, a wire nut onto it you tie it together then out of this wire you would take the black wire put it on the other screw and that runs up there then when you go to screw in the light, you tie the black and white wires to the light fixture that you're putting up there and you ground it with your copper line. <clears throat> when you flip the switch on, it turns the light on, flip it off, turns it off. That's a, that's a, that's a normal configuration of a regular switch. We're going to be doing three-way switches. This is just a basic three-way switch, just a toggle style. And the difference between them is they have three screws. Well, you have the fourth, but that's just the ground. That's, that's an all of them. But here's the configuration you have to do. I have my power line in. Now I have to run another wire from this switch box up through the ceiling over to that switch box. And that wire has to be special. It has to be... <clears throat> it doesn't have to be 14-gauge. You can be whatever gauge you want, but I'm using 14-gauge because just a light switch but this is a 14-3 and you can see the difference between the two different ones a 14-3 has three wires and then a ground wire instead of just the two instead of just a black and white you also have a red wire so the way that you tie this in it's very simple is <clears throat> this is going to be fed into here and becoming out this light box we're going to tie the ground wires together and then we'll put a jumper wire that'll go to this ground right here on the light switch. We're going to take these two white wires and we're going to put a wire nut on those just like we normally do. But then the power, the line that comes from your power, is going to be put onto this black screw. This is your common power, power uh, screw here on these light switches. So you're going to put the black wire onto here. And then out of your 14-3 wire, you got these two wires. And these get attached to your traveler screws. And they'll basically go like that. Okay? Then, you'll feed the wire up over here. Then you got the light switch that's going to be on this side. You'll have another three-way switch. And on that one, this wire will be coming out. And basically what you're going to do is you're going to have the white wire again. You leave that there. You're going to take these black and red screws, but black and red wires, put these on your traveler screws on that switch. And then you're going to have another 14 2 wire in that outlet, by that switch box that goes back up through and goes to the light. And out of that 14 2, you're going to have a white wire which you're going to tie together with this one with the wing nut. You're going to have your ground wires which you're going to tie together and have a jumper going here. But then you're going to have a single black wire that goes from that 14-2 up there. And that 
to a black wire is going to get attached to your black screw, your common power. So then what will happen is you come in here and you flip the switch, it will put power over through the switch, will go through this switch up to the light and turn it on. Then when you go over to that switch and say you turn it on or off or whatever, it will cut the power to that one. Basically what it does is every time that you flip it, there's you could think of it like a lever, and you flip this down, boom, it goes over and makes contact with this wire. Well, if power has been diverted over to, let's say, the black wire, like this, and you have your switch up, now it's over to here, the light is on. Now you go over there and you flip this, it's going to go boom, now it's going to put it over to this wire. Okay? So it's going to cut the power. Then if you come back out or whatever, you turn the power back on, boom, toggles goes back, put power to it. <coughs> Same way over here, <coughs> you come over, it's flipped over here on this side, so it's putting power through, but then you come over and flip this one, boom, it goes over to this side, it cuts the power to the black wire, turns the light off. Okay? It's a three-way switch. It's pretty easy. It's nice to have in room so that when you enter a room, you can turn the light on. If you exit through another door, you could turn the light on or off there too. That's what it's for. We're going to be putting three-way lights in here. And I'm also going to be putting a three-way light on this switch. And there's going to be a light switch over in that wall where you enter through the garage. So you could turn the lights on in this room, on or off from either end. It's pretty simple. So the first thing that we need to do is I need to run some wires. I need to run my 14-3 wire. And I need to run it up through and run it through the attic and have it come down through and into that box and then I'll run a 14 2 wire back up through there over to that hole there. <sighs> Sorry, I'm very sick here. Um, when you run wires like this, you can see how I've drilled the holes through here. You want to make sure that you don't run wires, multiple wires through the same holes. If you do that and you run wires and you cram a bunch of wires through that same hole, that's how you get electrical fires. You can see here, you see how they're see how these wires are divided? So that if you put multiple wires together and there's current running through them, the heat off of them will actually start to melt the coverage on it and then the wires, they arc together and you start a fire. So you want to make sure that you have space in between your wires. Um, this hole here will be for the wire that comes out of this box to go to the light over here. And so I will need to drill a new wire, a new hole here to run this 14 through wire up. And you just want to make sure that you have some spacing so that the wires are not touching, not grouped together. So that's what we're going to do now. And I also got to do it down here too. Got to put another hole through there. And I'll have to drill another hole for this one. And when you drill these holes, you kind of want to make sure that you're in the middle of the 2x4. The reason why you do that is so that when you put drywall on, your drywall screws don't come in and puncture your wires. Um, usually drywall screws, you get them, they're an inch, you know, inch and a quarter, inch and a half maybe, whatever. Because usually you're doing half inch drywall, and so you, your drywall screws will come in like so far. So you want to make sure that you're in past there, so that your drywall screws, by, you don't by accident screw into them. So that's all I'm going to start doing is drilling holes and running wires. Alright guys, there we go. We got our wire ran. Oh, I still got to run the 12 gate, 12, or the 14-3 wire out of this box. I got to drill another hole here. I forgot about that. Run it up, run it that way over to the LA. So I just got to run that before I put drywall on here. But we have our power wire. We have a power feed to go to that light switch. And then we have our 14-3 wire here fed up. And it comes over to this here box, ends up here. Here's our 14-2 wire. This one here goes to the light. It's gonna be installed right there. I gotta do a little patch job here. I knocked the old uh, box out of there because these new lights don't take don't actually have a box that sits up in there and so I didn't knock that one out and I kind of busted the drywall. I'll just putty that up and uh, then I'll just fix it up later and you'll never notice it. <coughs> but there we go. So now I got to grab my phone 
and um, I need to uh, take pictures of all the wiring in here. I got a pretty cool inspector up here and stuff. He's been really cool with it because usually what you do is wire everything and then the inspector will come in and look at everything, check everything off and then uh, you'd be good to go but because I'm doing this room by room and stuff I talked to him about it and I told him I just I can't do the whole house at one moment um, so he said that's fine and he gave me a cell phone number and and I just take pictures of it and I make sure to you know show the sizes how they're ran in that they're nailed to certain spots and the wires have all different holes and everything because we've talked about different he's told me what has to be done and I just take pictures of this stuff and I send it to him and he just what he usually does is, is and I'll put it in their dining room and he and um, he'll just usually sends me a thumbs up and so then I know I'm good to go and uh, I can start putting drywall up and in case everything in there and he said afterwards it's all over he'll come in here and he said he'll just test all the outlets and test all the switches everything checks off good we're good to go and I've been testing them. I got this little tester. I've been testing them as I've been going along too, to make sure that the grounds are good and everything else. And, and everything has worked out so far so good. So now I get to uh, start with drywall. I gotta... Well, guys, we got our wall bar put up on here. Got our three way switches all wired up, ready to be hooked up to the switches themselves. The wire end on, the yellow wire end. <clears throat> When I took this electrical box out, I just went into the attic and I just pounded it out. It damaged the drywall right here. I tried to just put some putty up in here to repair it, but it's still not going to be enough. It needs to be back here. I'm going to have to put some fiber tape over that. Put another coat of putty on. Seal that up. <clears throat> um, I forgot to patch this hole. This was the one that was for the ceiling. The ceiling fan used to be. Not, it's now going to be over there. And then there's going to be one of these LED puck lights right here. Um, I forgot to patch that up last night. And then the ferry room, I forgot to patch those two holes in this one. Um, so I'll, I'll do those two. I'm going to, I did sand. I did sand this room. I got it once sanded down. <clears throat> and I put another coat in a couple some spots that needed to be touched up pretty good um, It's coming up pretty good Pretty happy with it A lot of this you're not even gonna see There's gonna be cabinets and countertops and stuff like that um, I did get my corner trim put in here. I got this finished out. So I put that into there and um, That's ready to be sanded So I'll probably sand that and then put another coat on it but it's pretty much all sand, and you can see how this covered that up. It's worked out pretty good. You're not even going to see nothing there. So this room is uh, pretty close. I'm going to sand it here before. Uh, I think I'm going to be taking a break for a little bit. Uh, this is getting a lot worse. And I, I only come over and work a few hours and stuff, but I think I need a little break. So I uh, kind of getting in there and I think I'm once I get this done this room done I think I'll be done for a little bit I gotta take a break the sickness is just getting worse and worse but um <clears throat> right now what I'm working on is the floor and you can kind of see what I got laid out here I got the strips on here there is a a quite a bit of a sag in the floor right here you can see how I, how I have it built around that furnace. It just works out perfect in there. That furnace is just, it's a perfect fit in here. It doesn't have, there's no ducting or nothing in other rooms and stuff. And that's fine. It's, you know, just a little up north place and stuff. Um, my sister was actually saying, you know, while I have it all apart, I could get one of those units. I could put it up in the attic, or run ducting in each room and all this stuff. Yeah. What are they? Five, ten thousand dollars. I'm, I'm not spending all that much money. This is. I got this heater off of Marketplace for 125 bucks, and it works perfect. I've had it checked out. Everything is great on it. So, um, <clears throat> I think it'll be fine. Um, it does get. 
I think that if you close the doors, if you go to bed at night and you close the doors, it's going to be a little chilly in the morning. That it is. Um, I think that what will end up happening is having a fan maybe here or something like that to blow air into these rooms. I notice that when I come in here, there it's a little bit of a temperature drop. But I'm going to be honest with you, I like to sleep in colder weather. Um... So I don't have a problem with this at all. Um, one, the one problem is, is this room back in here. Um, it, it gets a little bit chillier in this room. It's a long ways away from the heat. It's got to go through all this. Um, there is going to be a heater on here, but I don't want to run this all the time. You know, um, We're going to see how this works out. But I... I know that that dryer vent is open to the outside. That could be why it's a little bit chillier in here. Um, and also there's a flooring that's going on inside here too. There's a subfloor that's going over top of this. So I'm gonna actually plan on doing that today. Um, I'm going to be doing this flooring here. And what I did is I measured, I don't know why, there's a drop. I do know why I think this was done on purpose. This was built this way. Um, this fairy room here was done recently. Um, it was an add on thing or, or redone or whatever, remodeled. And they, for some reason, they tapered the floor down to it. So it was like a slope going into it. it it's really got a big taper to it. <clears throat> and see, I got my laser level there set up. And if you come out to here, you got 35 and three quarter. You move back, it's like right here, 35, just a little bit over three quarter. It's pretty close. Right there, it's hitting three foot. But then watch, you move back here, it's 37 and a quarter. So. That's quite a bit of drop in just a little bit of area. It just goes, it goes down. And that's where the desk is going to sit. And plus, when you come in the front door and you walk in and stuff, it's like low, high, <laughs> you know. So we're going <clears> to <throat> level this area off. And I did look under the house, I because when I was jacking the house all up and everything over in that area where it was all falling down, Replaced all those joists. Um, got all that level. I knew this was bad too. And I actually crawled over here on the other side of the chimney underneath there. Under the, the main bracing that's under the house. And I looked over here. This has actually been all braced. And there's actually a really good joist system underneath here. It's been, a lot of it's new. They actually built it this way. And so I think it was the taper down there. I don't see the reason for it um, I'm going to build it up the, the simplest fix is I have measured at different points in the wall and how much it drops and what I would need to shim it to make this level <clears throat> it's an inch and a half inch and a half that goes down to three quarter of an inch right by the door on the other side of the door it's five eighths of an inch and over here it's almost almost a half inch um, I'm going to put down a OSB piece of wood on here. No, it's a half inch, so I won't even need a shim over there. And I've opened a door, and there is enough room. But I'm just using these pieces of drywall, and what I've done is I've just shaved some boards. I'm going to put them against the wall, and then I'm going to put slats going this way from the measurement of those little slats there going down to zero, coming out about right here. And then I'm going to put a piece of that OSB right here and put it over there. And then I have this stuff that's it's called floor leveling compound. It's kind of like a cement, but it's a really thin stuff. It's really, really runny. And you mix it up and basically all you do is just pour it into an area on the floor <clears throat> and it runs out and flows out. And it will fill things in and make them level. It goes wherever it, the low spots are. So I'm going to run that board out to about here. The floor starts to drop here. And I figure there's going to be a strip of that stuff like right here. <clears throat> and then this whole floor is going to get 
I'm going to be, I, there's a, a sander thing that I'm going to rent and I guess there's a chemical stuff that goes with it or something. You put it on here and you, you run it across and I'm going to kind of sand it to try to get most of this even. There's a lot of layers of stuff on here. Knock some of this off and then I'm going to be putting a top subfloor like what I did in the kitchen and the bathroom. That quarter inch stuff is going to go over this whole entire thing. So that'll go over the floor leveling and this OSB. It'll all level this out. Well, that way the desk is sitting here. You sit in a chair and you just don't roll into the desk. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're just making it level. Now there is going to be a slight step down right here in the doorway. Um, I'm not worried about that. The door opens in. It's not a big deal. It's a guest bedroom. You know, somebody comes walking out. Well, you need to pick your feet up. You know, there's going to be a little step down into it. <clears throat> and you can see it's not much. It's only going to be... It's... It's three quarter plus a half. So it's like an inch and a quarter down to like five eighths of an inch. It's kind of crooked there. It is what it is. Um, I'm trying this level this little floor. So that's what I'm doing is I've cut these boards and the OSB is actually a half inch thick. It's the same as this drywall. And so I have set that on there and now I have 35 and three quarters. So it's basically going to be just like this piece of drywall sitting on here. And it, except it'll end probably right here. It'll end a little further up. So that's what I'm working on now and then I'll build slats out for reinforcement underneath it and get this a little bit more level. So we got our kind of a grid laid out to um, place this on there and I have my sheet all measured and so we're going to be placing it down and um, I'm going to actually put some uh, a bunch of construction adhesive in here. The main reason why because there's kind of a hump here. And I can't really shim it out. There we go. <clears throat> and I can't really shim the, that out in there. So it's going to be kind of a main travel area between there. And so once I staple this down, that'll squish that out and fill the void in there. And then that will harden and that will keep that from bowing or flexing underneath there. There's other stuff that's going on top of this. But just to make sure there's no squeaky little floor thing or something. So I got to kind of cut sitting here studying the floor and looking at it and I kind of had to cut a angle just like that and because um, once a door goes in here and it's right here by the door it's okay it's just this little corner right here so I think that by pouring this stuff, this leveling stuff in here, and then um, there's going to be a quarter inch on top of that. Once that's on there, that's going to be pretty close to actually hitting. So we kind of needed that little bit there. There's It comes up just fine in height here. It actually measures out just fine right here. But from here down, it drops. So we got this set. Just got to... Secure it down. Just gonna double check everything. Make sure I got my measurement 35 and three quarter. Yep. Yep. All right, we got our measurement going across. So now we'll just tack her down. Put her down to the floor. This is the 
self-leveling floor underlayment cement. It's a very fine powder. mix it up in a couple things because I'll be honest with you the old poor DeWalt drill has had a workout Python I added too much water, didn't you? Mixing all the mortar from the bathtub really did a number. It was, it's just not, the drill is just not a drill for that, you know. That's a lot of work for mixing up that thick mortar. That's the same thing here. drill mater she's pretty hot but uh this stuff's pretty simple we're gonna start to pour it over here Now you can see what's going on. <clears throat> it's running down there and it's, fill, it's filling up to that void. So we're just gonna let this sit just for a second. Do its thing. Hey, I'm gonna need a little bit more over there. I thought, it would, I thought I'd run over there close enough, but. That's good. I'm going to just let it sit and it'll just keep flowing out and leveling itself and stuff. And that will make it really good, guys. We'll actually get a level floor in the dining room. Awesome sauce. So, I probably should have did this before. Because now I'm probably going to get sawdust. I think I might actually bring my, my uh, saw horses in here. <coughs> I gotta put down the subfloor. It's that same OSB stuff. It's half inch. It's just going right over the top of this. And that's gonna sit right over the top of that. Help seal that room up, get a give it a good floor in there. 
I didn't continue the floor from the bathroom in there when I sub put the subfloor in the bathroom because it was only maybe about a half inch of a difference in height. I should have did it before. Um, I should have actually put the, this in before. But um, before I put the walls in and everything, to tell you the truth. But I started thinking about it and you can see the plastic along. That's an exterior wall. And I put some foam down in there. There's some cracks and stuff in there. The foam, it, I don't know why it's pressed up like that. But it goes right down. But this plastic that's behind this wall for an exterior wall, seal it. And there's plastic over here. And I just left it hang out. I'm actually going to put the floor right over the top of that. That is going to seal that up like crazy. So, I mean, the first sheet's just a 4 by 8 sheet. I'm just going to bring it in. Drop it down on the floor, screw, you know, put staples all over the place, secure it in. And um, I think Tracy are having a fight about this. I said that I'm going to put linoleum from here over here and then put carpet over there. And she's like, well, if you're going to do the room, just put linoleum the whole thing. I said, you know, basically what I want to do is where the washer machines are, put linoleum on in case water spills out or something like that. It's not on a carpet. It's on the linoleum. She's like, well, you can just get those shower or those uh, washer and dryer pans or whatever you can put on there. And I said, yeah, I know. That's hokey. Put a nice linoleum floor in there. Basically, it's going to be right where they are, but then carpet the rest of it. So, you know, this is going to be a closet. And I'm going to put shelves up here for storing stuff, shelves up here. And then I'll probably put two, like one, probably those metal shelves that have a hanger thing underneath it, and probably put one here, and then I might put one on the lower too. And uh, that way that whole be, you can hang up clothes and everything, and then shelving in here too, so that you can stack shoes and, you know, all our riding gear, and all that kind of stuff. So, that's the plan. But we're, we're having a battle about that. I says, eh, it'd be nicer to have carpet. So when you walk in, you're walking in on carpet without your shoes on, going in here getting stuff, you know, but you still have linoleum where to washer and dryer. And guess what? I win because I'm doing it. She's not. <laughs> well, there we go. We got our new floor down. It's all down and everything, all nice and tight. And, um... I've changed my mind. I think I might actually just put linoleum in this whole room. I just put a piece of, um, put a piece of, um, uh, insulation down in there, put duct tape in there, and that's helped a lot. But this floor is down, so I'm going to put a piece of linoleum in here. I'm going to do a whole piece of linoleum. Uh, to me, I'm not giving in to Tracy. <laughs> The main reason why is because the piece of linoleum will come out and it'll kind of edge right there. And then the carpet will come up and it'll be about the same uh, thing. Otherwise, it'll be kind of a ramp down to it that you'll feel through the carpet and stuff. So I figured, you know what? We'll just do this whole room in linoleum. Put a carpet edge across right there in the doorway. And it'll be about the same height. And I don't want it to mess with it around with it. Uh, in here. Uh, the floor is uh, getting real dry <clears throat> it's drying out and everything and um, that's all good I will be getting a sander in the future and I'll be sanding it and it will bring it all nice and level so it will be nice and there won't be any slopes or nothing like that any kind of bumps underneath the flooring but like I said this whole thing is getting a quarter inch just like I did in the kitchen and everything the whole floor in here will be getting a quarter inch to over the top of it and then I will trim some some boards that are the right height as this the same height as match up and this door we actually have a brand new door for this and it will close up you can see where like the brown ends there's a piece of trim that goes in there to kind of door stop I think I'll bring this floor right out to that edge and I'll just do it with two by fours and then the quarter inch stuff will go over the top of it so there we go. Um, I think that I'm going to 
do a little bit of sanding on the drywall get this down in case I need to hit anything with an extra coat and I think I might insulate this and I think I'm done I think I'm gonna take a break for a little while guys I just I'm not feeling hot at all so I'm gonna catch you guys later I hope everyone out there is having themselves a great day great night as I watch this your video if you're not, just try it all over again tomorrow. I'll catch you later.